Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, welcome to the next topic. Uh, this is about aromatized wines. Now we've studied uh, what are regular wines. We have studied what are uh, sparkling wines. Now aromatized wines. Aromatized wines means these wines have extra aroma, extra smell, other than the regular wine smell. And of course, they also have extra brandy added into it. So aromatized wines are fortified wines with extra aroma. Um, so these aromas are usually herbs and spices which are added inside it. Uh, they've been happening for quite a long time, so more than 2000 years. Uh, the most modern, uh, the most famous aromatized wines nowadays are called vermouth. So we will focus on vermouth today to understand aromatized wines. Uh, these ones which you see on the on the uh, PowerPoint are one of the famous ones in the world called Dubonnet or Martini. Martini is one of the most famous. In fact, if you've heard about the cocktail Martini, it is made with this Martini, Pumut and Gin mixed together. So what is Pumut? It's an aromatized wine which has aromatic herbs and flavors added into it. Now these herbs and flavors are company secrets or trade secrets. Now they would actually show them to you if you ask them. Uh, and even if you get an idea of most of the product they have, you still don't know how much do they use of each and what percentage they use of each. How long do they steep those flavors in the alcohol uh, and what temperature they steep them in the alcohol. So all these things are very hard to replicate until you know the exact uh, styles and standards which are uh, followed. Due to this, even if a company uh, tells you their secrets, it will be very hard for us to uh, copy them, uh, copy these famous brands. So, and usually uh, a normal wine is between 8 to 14 or 15 percent alcohol. Uh, a, a fortified wine or aromatized wine will be a normal wine plus extra brandy. So they will be from 15 to 20 or even up to 22 percent alcohol. And there are just a few of the herbs and spices which are known to be put inside uh, Vermut. The one which you see in the bottom here, that's called wormwood. The green herb in the bottom there is called wormwood. Now, wormwood is the standard flavor which is put in all the wormwood. That is where you get the name wormwood. Now, other than that, you have all the other herbs and spices. A uh, few examples, you've got things like cinnamon or cassia, you've got ginger, you've got star anise, you've got black pepper, you've got uh, citrus peel like orange and lemon. Uh, you may have different kind of herbs and flowers and roots which are used to flavor. Now if you see the bag in the, in the corner, in the bottom there, you can actually see herbs and spices there. But unfortunately, it's very hard for us to find out the ratio of what to what. Now there's basically two styles of vermouth. One is called the dry vermouth and the other one is called the sweet vermouth. The dry vermouth are usually white in color, whereas the sweet vermouth are usually red in color. There's also a third category called the rosé vermouth. But they're not that famous. Okay, let's have a look at the dry vermouth. Uh, as soon as you see this name, many of you know this name already because this is what is used for making your cocktail uh, called you know, dry martini, a martini dry. Now, this is a martini dry, but a dry martini is a cocktail. So it's just uh, the, the name has been changed. Dry means it doesn't have any sugar inside, um, and it, it, it also doesn't have any color. That means it's very good for making cocktails without any color inside, like a martini. You, you want the martini to look like water, you know, transparent. Gin has no color, dry vermouth has no color. So when you make a martini cocktail, uh, it, it's colorless, and maybe you garnish with uh, a green olive or something. Or maybe a slice of or a lime. Uh, then you have the sweet vermouth. These ones uh, go very well uh, 
on its own, with mixed with ice, maybe mixed with a slice of orange or a little bit of orange juice. Uh, they go very well after lunch in the afternoons. In Italy, it's quite famous to have vermouth after lunch instead of having tea and coffee as we do in Asia. Then the third category is called rosé vermouth, which is in between a, a red vermouth and a white vermouth. Uh, not that famous, but it's still uh, it's available for people who would want it. Now, the manufacture of vermouth. Now, this is important. Uh, so, all of you know how to make a white wine or a red wine. So, I'll not go how to do the wine part. Uh, first step, you've got the wines. Now, what you do is you add these herbs and flavors inside the wine. One way of doing it is make a, something called a bukigani or you know, like a tea bag of all these herbs and spices inside and soak them inside these barrels and keep them uh, for a few days, weeks or months so that the flavors are infused and the oils are infused in the product. Now after a, a few days, weeks or months, now you've got a lot of flavor Plus, uh, you know, all these herbs and spices also give a lot of color to your product and uh, they disintegrate into, you know, brown colored powders and paste inside. So they need to be cleaned off so that your product looks uh, nice and clean. So there's a clarification process. After clarification, they fortify the product. They fortify with sugar. They also fortify with extra alcohol if needed. Fortify means uh, make it stronger. And then the next step is stabilization. So you have sugar added into it, herbs and spices added into it, maybe uh, uh, the so the actual product mixed together. Now all of them need to settle down and become one. You know, when you drink the product, you don't want to get uh, flavors which are not uh, tasted as as one product. So they are stabilized, usually in a very cool, very chilled uh, environment. Then they are matured. Usually, vermouth are not matured too long, maybe a month, maybe a couple of months. Uh, the reason is whenever you add a herb and spices, now most of the herb and spices, if you know cooking, you know this that when you crush freshly ground uh, herbs, you know, when you crush black pepper, when it's fresh crushed, it smells really nice. But if you buy powdered black pepper from the market, you will see the flavors have gone off. So that's the same thing with vermouth or any kind of uh, alcohol, even like gin, which has herb and fly flavors added into it. We do not mature them because we don't want those flavors to go away. So they are relatively young. Now, service of vermouth. The best way to drink vermouth is on its own. Uh, you can also mix it with tonic water, soda water, lemonade. Uh, you can make cocktails like the one which you see on the screen. This is a martini, which is gin and vermouth mixed together. Uh, uh, there's no set quantity. Every company comes up with various sets. Some of them are equal, some of them are different. Uh, it's usually garnished with uh, something called pimento olive. These are the olives which you see on the screen. Pimento olives basically means green olives which have been pitted or the seeds are removed and they are stuffed with pimento. Pimento is just like a red pepper, a slice of red pepper added into it. Uh, some people don't like the salty taste of olives, so instead they would also like a slice of lime or a slice of orange in it to give it a more citrus kind of flavor. In the bottom here on the screen, I've also put another YouTube clip which you can watch, which can help you uh, further enhance your knowledge on the one. Now, I have a few famous brands here. Again, remember, these are not the tastiest brands. These are not the best brands. These are the most famous brands. Now, sometimes students will ask me whether it is tasty. Is it the tastiest brand? Is Martini the tastiest? Now, the taste is a very personal choice and all of us are different. So what you like, I may not like. And what I like, you may not enjoy those flavors. So it's very hard for me to tell you that Nolly Pratt or Sinzano is the tastiest. For example, for me, a burger from one shop is very tasty. But for you, you would like a burger from a different shop. Uh, 
so all of us are different so uh, these are the most famous ones uh, like i said they may not be your choice but usually most of the world prefer such uh, brands like this okay with this i come to the end of this slide uh, i'm happy to study